Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're uh, really getting into something interesting, maybe a bit uncomfortable for some folks, a specific take on U.S. stocks. Yeah, the source material we're looking at makes a pretty bold claim, basically calling the current U.S. equity market a classic mm. bubble. Mm. The core of it is this idea that today's prices kind of assume a whole bunch of really optimistic things stay true forever. You know, record high valuations, sky high profit margins, easy money. Low risk, great productivity, no policy scares. Exactly. And the source says, look, arithmetically, historically, it's just really, really unlikely all these things hold up for, say, 10 years or more. Right. So that's our job today. We're going to dig into how this analysis works piece by piece so you can really grasp the argument here. What are the numbers saying? What's the history? Okay, so let's start with how they build this bubble case. The source argues that, well, if you look at almost any long-term measure that tries to predict future returns, mm. U.S. stocks just look extreme. It's not about celebrating past wins. It's about, you know, what the next decade might actually bring. And what's really key here are metrics like um, the KP ratio. Schiller P.E., it smooths out earnings over 10 years, right? Right. And it's still way, way above its historical average. The source points out that the last times we saw levels like this, think 1929, uh, 2000, well, the next decade saw pretty poor, sometimes negative, real returns. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just KP. You've got the market cap to GDP ratio, the Buffett indicator, and price-to-sales ratios are getting close to those dot-com levels again. Put them together. And what does that imply? The implication, according to this analysis, is that likely 10 to 12 year returns for the S&P 500 are probably clustered somewhere near zero. Valuation isn't about timing the market day to day, you see. It's presented more like a, like a compass for the long road ahead. OK, but you always hear the counter. This time is different. Margins, corporate profit margins, they're just structurally higher now, right? <laughs> How does the source handle that? Uh, yes, so he <sighs> tackles that head on. The analysis basically says, hold on, let's look at operating margins. EBIT earnings right. before interest and taxes, the core profitability, the actual business operations. Okay. Over 70 years, the source finds no real lasting upward trend there. What looks like higher net profit margins since the early 80s. Right. Well, they argue it's mostly down to things like falling interest costs. Ah, uh, because rates came down for decades. Exactly. And lower effective tax rates. Th these are seen as like external boosts, mm -hmm. right? Not necessarily the companies themselves becoming fundamentally way more efficient across the board. Mm. So paying peak prices on what look like peak earnings, that's presented as, well, the definition of having no margin of safety. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if valuations look stretched and maybe the profit story isn't as strong as it looks, the big question is why hasn't the market you know, corrected. Why hasn't gravity kicked in yet? Good question. The source points heavily towards liquidity. You have that massive uh, surge in the money supply, M2, especially from the pandemic stimulus and transfers. That created this huge multi-trillion dollar cushion. Right. A lot of cash sloshing around. And then there's the effect of passive investing, index funds. They just keep buying based on inflows, regardless of the price, yeah. sort of dampening the usual signals that might cause sellers to step in. So money flows mask underlying issues. Potentially. And it ties into another point they make about uh, debt efficiency. It's basically mm -hmm. taking more and more debt creation over the decades to get each extra dollar of GDP growth. This suggests maybe some profits are a bit hollow, juiced by leverage rather than pure organic productivity gains. Okay, and every bubble seems to need a narrative, right? A story for why it's justified. The source mentions AI as today's big one. Yes, the transcendent story, as they call it. AI is definitely part of the current narrative. Now, the source doesn't dismiss AI's impact. It'll absolutely create winners and losers. Sure. But the argument is that it probably shifts who captures the profits more than it permanently lifts the average profit margin for the entire economy indefinitely. Competition usually arose those super profits over time, you know. So if AI isn't the magic bullet for overall market valuation, how does this potentially unwind, according to the source? Well, they lay out a few, frankly, uncomfortable paths. One is just a straightforward valuation-driven bear market. Prices come down to meet reality. Another is that those high profit margins mean revert back towards historical averages. Which would also hit prices. Right. Or maybe there's some kind of financial accident, something unforeseen that triggers a correction. Or perhaps just a long period of stagnation where the market goes nowhere for years while the fundamentals catch up. The only real bullish escape hatch they mention 
is if we get this massive sustained productivity boom. Like truly unprecedented. Exceptionally high is the term used. Something really fundamental has to change in the economy's productive capacity to justify today's levels, according to this view. Wow. So wrapping this up, what's the key takeaway for you, the listener, trying to make sense of all this? I think the core message from this source is that the market seems to be stacking extremes atop contingencies. Meaning, prices today assume that a whole bunch of things that normally revert to average, like valuations, profit margins, credit cycles, even policy risks, won't revert this time. It's asking a lot. It's asking a lot. It's presented less as a calculated investment, more like a, well, a prayer that history stops rhyming. So in a market potentially lacking that margin of safety, the source isn't necessarily saying be pessimistic, but maybe have a deep respect for arithmetic. Yeah. Definitely some food for thought there.